Hello everyone, my name is Alicia Jackson, Licensed Professional Counselor, and welcome to my channel. Today we are reviewing Merit at First Sight, Season 17, Episode 12. Here at this channel, we do a different type of therapeutic review where we get a little curious. We don't dump, jump to conclusions or make assumptions or even come from a place where we're trying to be critical of the participants, cast members, the brides, the grooms, however you would like to describe them. We get a little curious about what's happening inside of them to learn, to learn to understand why they may be showing up in that way, to learn about relationships and potentially maybe a little bit about ourselves as well. If you are returning, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get started. First, we have Becca and Austin. And, uh, you know, this episode, they have a pretty good uh, go of it. So um, they are in the bed together. We have to see inside of Austin's mouth while he yawns for some reason. Uh, probably just because they are both silly, silly bunch. And um, Austin is surprised. He joins Becca at one of her studios. She said that she does work and she's a photographer. And she surprises him by having some of his friends who have two adorable little ones. Uh, to do a, a photo shoot together and he's helping her and kind of seeing her work he really enjoys seeing her in her element and he has a part of him that's really excited about the fact that she does really well with kids even austin's friends described her as the kids whisperer like she uh, does a really great job engaging with children and creating beautiful moments uh, on, on camera. It, it was. It was really masterful to see. So I do see that potentially. I see there's like a part of Austin that is still in the interviewing process with Becca while he enjoys her, while he has a great time with her. It feels like he's still like, I'm not sure if I'm going to fully commit because there's some things that I still need to see. It's almost like for him, even though they are legally married, that he's in a dating phase with her and maybe she is in a space where she's married and so they're in like two different stages of um relationship it that's what it feels like even with the dinner right with his family he said you know it's really important for becca to have their stamp of approval it's almost as if to say like hey if this dinner doesn't go well or if my family is picking up or my parents are picking up some bad vibes that potentially you know, at the end of decision day, we might say no, or I might say no to, to this relationship. And so he's still in the process of, again, working out these, these big things for himself. Like, okay, is Becca going to be a great mom, right? There's a part of him that's like, all right, is Becca uh, going to be able to work through, are we going to be able to work through this, these challenges with raising children and we have we come from these two different spaces when it comes to religion do my parents approve of her um these are these are big things that he's still considering and i'm wondering how they're having a, a conversation around this uh it seems that maybe this is something that austin is holding to his chest a little bit um to maybe not really be fully honest with becca about where he is for potential that he's concerned about hurting her. I, I do see that he definitely is fond of her and he really enjoys her. And at the same time, I see a part of him is still like interviewing her and seeing if she's the right one. Saying like, okay, experts, I see that you feel like she's the one for me. But these are some things that I still need to see if she's the right one for me. Um, they did also have uh two fish children they have dalmatian fish and i didn't even know that those were a thing and they're very cute and of course austin and becca could not just have a regular goldfish right they had to have dalmatian fish which is precious um and i feel like it's actually kind of a really cool thing to do uh, to have a shared relationship it's something that's like very low stress and at the same time still a, a shared like responsibility uh, for their relationship to really see how it's going to progress. Will will they have a huge argument of like, oh, you didn't feed the fish today? No, but it's something that can just help to bring in the couple together, help to have them continue to join in as they build their relationship. While they're at the dinner, one Austin takes them to the place where he had his first job. So I felt like that was also kind of sweet that he's like, also bringing Becca into parts of his life while 
introducing, right, and, and really having this nice relationship and seeing if, hey, if, if my parents are going to be able to really join with Becca. Uh, they also learned that his mother and her mother have this really great love of history. Becca's mother's actually a historian, and so his mother's, like, really intrigued by that, and she wants to review their lineage and, and see, right, where there's connections. So... It seems to be that they really enjoy her. His father said that she's a pleasant surprise and his mother seems to be more than thrilled. So they're moving in the right direction. Um, we know that things are moving slow. Becca has a part of her that wants things to move faster. And it really feels like Austin is a person who moves very intentionally in, at a, in a more intentional space, even though he has this part of him that's a life of a party. There's a part of him that is very social and silly. When it comes to relationships and things of that nature, he seems to move at a different pace and be more intentional about his relationships. And not to say that Becca isn't being intentional. I just think she likes to move faster. And so this is, this will be interesting how this these two parts mesh i feel like both are important there needs to be some forward movement and at the same time there is some risk there's a part of part of austin that has some is doing some risk analysis and maybe more concerned about risk and i'm really wondering and getting curious about that as well he doesn't really talk a lot about about his intern internal process he just says i have some things to think about or I have some things to consider while i'm working through some things doesn't really say what those things are or how he's doing that. And Becca, we're seeing even in the last episode, she's wanting to make sure this is a priority. Can you just make sure this is a priority? This is something you're going to work on. And so hopefully they're able to meet each other at the, at the middle. They can do both. They can be in, they can be very intentional and methodical and also still move forward. It doesn't have to be either or. And it feels like potentially that's what's happening in their relationship that's like the unspoken thing that's happening right now for them but we shall see next we have michael and chloe and you're saying who's chloe well chloe is the new bride as michael of course to decide to get married at first sight again she is a philanthropist she works in the nonprofit sector and does a lot of fundraising she has some we learn a little bit more about her personality. She has a part of her that's a minimalist, doesn't like a lot of things and belongings. Uh, we know that Michael is a pretty eccentric guy. He has a he has a lot of style. He likes he likes to you know really express himself in his clothing. And so I wonder if he has a lot of clothing. I wonder. I don't know that. Right? We didn't get to really meet Michael in that in depth way. We just saw him like in this really tender space in his life and how he's worked through that and we don't see like how he navigates life this is where we will see that and so i'm wondering how those two things will connect she also has a part of her that is a perfectionist and she says she calls herself a recovering perfectionist and sees how she's put a lot of pressure on herself to main maintain an image and her friends even said that she tries to be control of everything in her life and ooh, that's a lot um because I wonder how that's going to mesh with Michael. Michael, from what I see, is, is a bit laid back. That It could really balance or it could backfire. We've seen that. Um, so I'm wondering how that will also mesh. Also, she did say that the, the part of her that is putting this pressure on her to be perfect, she also put that on her person that she was in relationship and she saw how that caused a lot of tension and unnecessary tension in their relationship so i'm wondering how this will work out as this part is still with her you know um this is a very very common part um most or not all of us have some layer layer of perfectionism and we have to navigate that and so that's why it's so hard for us to give ourselves grace when we make a mistake that's why it's so hard for us to even give other people grace and and navigate like grace and accountability and how they can be this you know there's their space for both of them um we tend to be in a space of like blame and shame which is coming from perfectionism and so it'll be interesting to see how they navigate this how they navigate these uh different 
areas where they have some some opposing ways of life now chloe did say that she is in a space now where she is embracing fun and more dedicated to enjoying life being in the moment and she feels like now is the time where she really feels like she's ready for this commitment and so she finds out that she is getting married at first sight just a couple days when most people who get married at first sight have a couple weeks uh to to get ready she only gets a couple days they the experts decide to not share with her about michael's situation of being left at the altar because he feel they feel like she's going that's going to make her have more protection of more concern more worry that's not necessary i feel like that is a disservice to her um that is you know this is my opinion right so i feel like that's a disservice to her uh, because that's putting her in a situation where she's not getting all of the the information um I understand the intent, right? So their intent to withhold the information is to protect the relationship. However, when she gets in it and finds out what happened, you know, what? how will she respond, right? I could, she could respond a lot of ways. Like, oh my goodness, I can't believe that happened to you and really be present with him uh, in that or feel like, wow, they put me in this situation and didn't tell me uh, and then start to maybe not trust the process because of that. So... We shall see how they respond to that situation. Uh, She did go and pick out her dress. On the second dress, she said uh, that she had one that was a blush dress, which I felt like really her groom would really like um, because he's so eccentric. Uh, But she felt like that picking that dress would be making the day about her instead of about them. And so we see that there's this part of her that is very thoughtful. Uh, And so she picked her second dress she loved, so... She's getting ready for her big day, and Michael has decided to discard all of the wedding gifts from his first, not marriage, which, you know, for his first ceremony, we'll just say, and he's really just wanting to reset and release that and move forward in this new journey. So we shall see how that goes. Next, we have Cameron and Claire, and Claire is still kind of navigating oh what is life like without Cameron and she's realizing that it feels strange it feels strange to not have his presence to not be connecting with him and so she's just noticing how that feels like she's feeling things she didn't expect to feel and next thing we see is her on the phone with Dr. Pia and Dr. Pia is just checking in with them because she just wants to make sure they have exhausted like all resources like did they really give this the full effort and the full you know push to really make this work and um claire is really emotional because cameron is having some health concerns and some health issues and she's feeling guilty around that and she said logically right logically she knows that it's not her fault she didn't cause this And at the same time, she still feels bad. She feels guilty. And there's a part of her that doesn't know how to show up because they are separated. She doesn't know what Cameron's needing for her. Dr. Pia did ask, hey, did you ask what, you know, ask Cameron what he needs from you? And Claire said, well, yes. He said, just don't worry, which I hear Cameron, right? Um, Not worrying helps him. However, I don't know if it's possible for Claire to not worry about about him or be concerned about him. Um, She can keep her worry to herself and work through that for herself, right? The part of her that's concerned and worry about his health, right? What is that part concern will happen to him? What what is that part of her concern will happen to her, right? If something were to to happen to Cameron. And so really taking care of that part for her. And so that's really where... Dr. Pia was focusing her concern of like, oh, how can you be present for yourself and take care of yourself while you're navigating all of these emotions instead of pushing them towards Cameron, who's already like in a really stressful situation. And so she said, of course, you know, she has her support of her family and and she's also going to, of course, offer her support of her family to Cameron because he doesn't have his family here while he's navigating all this health concern so the next thing we see is Cameron kind of on the steps and he's sitting and he's stating that his heart rate is moving at a very rapid speed uh, and it's to the point where he 
doesn't really walk or he hasn't been doing a lot of engaging with people because if his heart rate goes up to 100, um, then he's going to start to do a lot of damage to his heart. And he's going to actually need operation. And so he's saying, well, do I feel like the stress of this relationship had an impact or caused this? Eh, he said, maybe not. It may have accelerated it, but he doesn't know. Um, but it does kind of almost reinforce, right, what he was feeling would happen and did happen with his father. And so it seems like definitely there is some... Um, a genetic heart disease in his family. Of course, I am not an expert in heart disease. Don't know anything about that. Just want to speak that. <laughs> and also know that biological genetics like this, this plays a role in our health, of course, and in our, in our mental health. And so I'm wondering now more what this process felt like internally for Cameron, knowing that he has this condition or, you know, is predisposed to having this condition, what this how the stress right of this relationship what that really felt like for him internally i'm i'm now wondering more and and also giving claire some grace too because even though she intellectually knows that she did not cause this situation and it, it, it's only human that a part of her feels feels guilty and so i'm hoping that she takes care of that part of her and really sits with that and and really processes some she did have a meeting with her cousin and kind of updated her about how they're separated and his health concerns and and her her cousin really you know tried to reassure her and said you know this situation could have been much worse it seems like he's still a great person it seems like you guys are still wanting to stay connected and be friends and claire really feels like you know he had a lot of qualities that she asked for and and really values and still wants him to be in her life and feels like the the change in relationship was very abrupt even for her so i wonder how that abrupt change even was for cameron uh as well he didn't speak to that as much because of course he's struggling with his health concerns um and at the same time i wonder especially with claire speaking to that you know just because the person makes a decision to end the relationship doesn't mean that they don't go through the grief process of that as well and um like i spoke to before grief has a has a impact on our body on our health and can show up in a lot of ways so i'm just wondering right especially with claire naming that and she's wanting to at minimum still have be connected with Cameron in some way and also have her family be a support to him as well. And then her cousin ended the conversation with saying, Hey, and you met, and you never know. And you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if they, they really seem like they had a lot of great qualities that really meshed well. So I even makes sense to me why um, that poll stated that Cameron and Claire would be the, you know, a really great match because on paper, it really does seem like they work. And at the same time, too, there are some struggles in communication that we saw with this couple. And I don't know if with everything that's going on in Cameron's life right now, how that would work and in, in, in really play out with all these health um, issues and really the past in the relationship. Because oftentimes what happens is you start to repeat the same patterns because there's, there's still the same methods of protection that we have. Uh, we are still ourselves. And so when we're in a situation and the person's showing up in the same way, we're going to show up in the same way to protect ourselves. It's just an eight. I'm just hoping that Claire takes care of herself, Cameron takes care of himself, and, um, and whatever that means, right? It, even if that means that, hey, maybe having Claire's family is too much of a trigger for him. You know, we don't know. Uh, Claire did state that she is really to just work it through the grief of what she was hoping this process could have been. So she's grieving a few things, grieving what she was hoping to happen, grieving that her relationship with Cameron itself too. So there's a lot happening all at once. And she also stated that this time away is helping her to, to process things and also give more clarity about like how she was showing up in the relationship and what she was experiencing in the relationship as well. We shall see how this plays out 
and hoping definitely the best for both of them. I know that this is pre-recorded and, um, you know, things have played out. And at the same time, still hoping, hoping the best for both of them. Last, we have Emily and Brennan. Oh, boy. And this is pretty much the bulk of the episode. Okay. The other couples, I had like a short paragraph. This couple, I have like three, paper, three pages of notes on this couple. Okay. So, here we go. So, Emily and Brennan are really in a space where they're discussing the situation that happened last night. And we learn a little bit more on the after party, too, because Brennan was there. And so, we're getting just Brennan's side. We're not getting Emily's side. So, I'm going to name that as well um, because I feel like that's just, um, that's fair, right? That's fair to, to there's there's always different perspectives in how things were, were um, perceived and how things landed. Like, all of those things are things to take into consideration when we're talking about an event or something that occurred okay and so emily said that brennan was mad at her she was in the apartment by herself and she had these really cute as you can tell by now i'm a fan of glasses and those pink frames those square pink frames emily had were very very cute i digress so she was in her apartment and she was talking about how brennan was brennan was upset about her acting crazy last night. And she said, whatever that means. And so then we come to hear what that meant. As Brennan said that she, at first he kind of didn't say directly. And Keisha was like, what are you trying to say? She did. He was in the shower and Emily was, was inebriated. And she tried to pull the, the curtain on the shower. I guess trying to get into the shower with Brennan and then she was um so she was like out of it you know uh, I guess passed out after being drunk that she kind of took over the the bed and he said like she because he almost he almost made it seem like she was intentionally suffocating him which was not a truth but she was just passed out to the point where it seemed like he didn't have space in the bed okay and he was annoyed by that rightfully so and so that is the behavior in which he was naming about that he was upset that she was acting crazy last night. So it wasn't just because looking at it in the moment, I thought he was talking about the fact that she just got upset because he wasn't participating and was, was being tight lipped about everything because he was on camera. And so at first I was like, this doesn't make sense. But now, OK, it makes a little bit more sense about her crazy behavior right, that he was naming and so he's like hey i need a break and he's like i'm not running because i've done that in the past that's not what i'm doing i just need i just need a moment so emily is annoyed she feels like he's not really communicating with her and that he's putting up a wall and she's like i've been trying i've been really trying and she gets emotional for the last few weeks and they've been really hard on her and they have and she has a problem with how he makes her feel and how he talks to her okay and so this is this is, it's a challenge. It's a, it's a challenge where this couple is. And I wish again that they had more support uh, to navigate this. And maybe it's the part of me that is wanting like in the moment intervention or in the moment um, processing to help these couples navigate all of this. Um, because where Emily is, is she's coming from a space where I'm seeing like the part of her that is just continuing to try, continue to push forward. And it's not, she's not really talking about how he talks to her or how he mistreats her, at least not on camera to, that I see. She's just holding it in and taking it in because she's like, I want to put forth the best effort. I want to make this work. Brennan is at a space where... He's, hold, he's withholding information that he's upset about that as to why the relationship shifted and at the same time is still trying to, to put forth some type of effort to not run away, to do something different. Both of them are trying not to run away. That is, that is the truth, right? He's ran away in, in other relationships. She's just chosen not to commit, period, Okay. And we learn more about that a little bit, too, as um, they do this exercise uh, that they had, that they do with Dr. Pepper. What we'll get into that a little later. So Emily is talking with her friend. Her friend comes, her friend's name is Lily, comes to the apartment and they're discussing the relationship. And Lily is like, OK, we're going to, you know, pack, unpack all this. And Brennan, um, she said that Brennan said, well, why are you talking to em Lily about this? And I guess there's a part of him that's like, why are you? 
broadcasting. This is what I'm feeling is his concern. I don't know this to be true. Uh, I want to say that. And at the same time, I'm, I have a sense that Brennan just doesn't like for other people to know his, his business. He doesn't like for a lot of people to know. There's like some protection around that. There's some shame in that. I, I sense that like there's, um, there's a lot of shame there just around people knowing things. Because he definitely has this part of him that conceals information. And, you know, that's, that's, that, and it's a method of protection, whether it's like, I want to be seen in a certain light. I don't want you to know what I'm going through. I don't, right, like to share my feelings like that. That's a part of Brennan and how he's showing up in this situation. And so she's upset. She's like, I don't deserve these lack of responses, this lack of communication. Um, she is embarrassed of the, of the fact that he's putting forth this this minimal effort and she stated that he doesn't know when she's upset and that's a little concerning for her because she's like everybody else knows but you don't know i i can imagine how that could be scary for her because then how can he really be attentive to her and know when something's not okay he'll just keep acting like everything's fine and she's doing um emily is a person that does have very strong um facial responses and expression that is a thing and it does seem that Brennan does miss that a bit. Um, I don't know if he's if he's intentionally not attending to her, or if he's just like in his in his own space, like trying to navigate his own stuff. Because that could that could also be a truth. But we it's 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 missing. There's a misfire in the communication for sure. You know, even in the session with Dr. Pia when she had that look of frustration, and he's like, "Oh, that's just her thinking face." It's like no. She is not thinking. And it and it seems like that could really be a growth edge for him. Just tapping to his emotions and, and gaining some emotional intelligence to really be aware of what he's feeling, when he's feeling it, and all the things. But he's not there, right, in in that space. And most of the, the gentlemen kind of name that in some degree, uh, that that's a learning curve, which makes sense. I mean, because of how our society, especially American society, is is set up when it comes to men and their expectations of them and how they're supposed to show up. It makes sense why the men struggle in that way. And at the same time, the impact of that is there's a lot of misfires and miscommunication that are happening in relationships, specifically with Emily and Brennan. And so Emily talked about this reset that Brennan is wanting and her friend is like, why are you agreeing to this? Uh, and she said she just wants to keep trying. She wants to give her all. She wants to put forth her best effort and she said, you know, I hear you. And I also, you know, I, I've been consistently saying, like, tell me what the reason is that you're showing up for someone who clearly isn't showing up for you. Emily stated that she feels like there was some care. There was some concern at the beginning that that was real. And, and he put a wall up. And yes, I think that, intent, that that was something there. And Brennan was genuinely excited about Emily. And then he began to learn about these things like we've he said it at the after party we saw that uh during the honeymoon and he has a, a hard time communicating his feelings we see this in the hot tub um it's it's we have the evidence now right that he has a hard time communicating his feelings it's easier for emily to do that and at the same time she has this part of her that does appease right does it try to appease brennan to keep him um like to be i guess a united front and at the same time, there's this part of her that's like, we don't deserve this, right? We deserve better. We're annoyed. And you see both parts throughout the episode as they're engaging with each other. And so they meet with Dr. Pepper. And this meeting, in my view as a therapist, did not go well. At the same time, it went how it went. So it went how it was supposed to go. There's a part of me that's saying that. I think the part of me that's saying that is wanting Dr. Pepper to just be more honest with what she's seeing in the room. To name what's in the room, it feels like Dr. Pepper doesn't name that and then continue to push through blindly like they've been doing, which isn't helpful to either of them. So Dr. Pepper saying, hey, we were hoping for, you know, more romantic connection, but that's not where you are. And Brennan said that, you know, they just need to do a reset as friends. Dr. Pepper wants more clarity about what a reset means. And he's like, just from the beginning, like, hi, my name's Brennan, you know, and I like, I like chocolate or whatever. <laughs> uh, and, and then Dr. Pepper is like, okay, Emily, are you okay with this reset? And Emily's like, yeah, you know, um, it'll help us to really navigate what's happening, like to really understand what's happening between us. 
And so then Dr. Pepper gets some clarity about like, okay, what do you mean by friends? Like friends like, hey, we just hang out or friends like intimate friends. Like we, you know, we share details of our lives with each other. We try to build a true, genuine friendship. They said, hmm, you know, they don't know they're wanting to to see, but they're still trying to navigate that. And uh, they do feel like they both have a genuine connection with each other. So then Dr. Pepper says, okay, well, all right, tell me what you like about each other. Brennan, what are five characteristics that you like about Emily? And I think I counted at least four to five Mississippis before he named one thing. Then still pause. So it's like she's caring and I really enjoy hanging out with her and, you know, we have a great time together. And so, and I was like, oh, those are like the same thing. And they're not five things. I, I'm like, ooh, I'm like, how did, how would it feel for her? Just even if Dr. Pepper, because Dr. Pepper, what she did was she compared the two because Emily was able to rattle some off and there were some of them. I was like, are Brennan, you feel like Brennan is the, some of those things? Okay. Um, but he's like, you know, I like her list better than your list. Instead, hmm, Brennan. I noticed, tell me how it was for you to name those three things or to name those things about Emily that you like. Tell me what that experience like was like for you. I don't want to make assumptions. So really have him even explore that for him because he may not know. He may not know. Um, and you could see that Emily had a re- emotional response. Tell me, Emily, what it was like to see Brennan name characteristics that he likes about you. And vice versa. So they can see that there was a difference and even sit and sit with the feelings and thoughts that came with that instead of just like breezing by that. However, that didn't happen. And so now they're in a space where they're going to do this reset. They're going to do the usual math thing of the fishbowl and the questions. That can be a really great tool to help couples who are navigating connection um, because we do, we do tend to get like in a rut, like, Hey, how was your day? How was your day? Okay. And then that's it. And not really dig in to really learn each other's story. And sometimes it's hard when there are guards up. So I get the fishbowl, not, not trying to, um, you know, say the fishbowl doesn't work. Just saying this couple needs more than the fishbowl, fishbowl and what, right? Uh, so, and some truth potentially. And so they're doing this, uh, fishbowl activity, you know, uh, because again, they did say that they do have a connection. Brennan said that they do have agree on like their philosophies on life and how they see family and how they want to raise children. Like these are places that they connect on. So I said, okay. And Emily agrees. So, okay. It feels like, again, there's so many things that are not being said between them two. And it just doesn't seem conducive to building any type of relationship let alone friendship you still need trust you still need communication and a friendship you still need that you still need a space where you can be vulnerable with each other and it doesn't seem like they're that they're there at all so they're talking about the fishbowl and the boundaries right because Brennan said that he also needs boundaries to go and 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 come as he pleases he doesn't want pressure to spend time together which I don't know what the impact of that is on Emily. What I hear is like, oh, you don't want to spend time with me. And I'm wondering if that's how Emily's hearing it. So it just, I feel like they need more support than what they're getting. And I understand, I feel like Brennan maybe doesn't like Dr. Pia, which I also have space for. And at the same time, I feel like this intervention was a bit, lackluster in my opinion for where Brennan and Emily are in their relationship and I don't know if you know this is all Dr. Pepper has so if that's all she has that's all she has and at the same time I'm just like oh okay so they do the fishbowl the first question are like my boundaries are and then so Emily she does a little dig right so she she shoots a dig and says you know okay this is a great question for you uh and so Brennan stated you know having space um, and, and taking the time when I need to be, need to, and not have the pressure of hanging out all the time. Okay. And so Emily had a response on her face. We see it. That's not really addressed, but it's there. Right. And then, so the next question, the hardest thing I've had to forgive. So then Emily talked about her dad and she said she had some, and Carrie's resentment 
towards her dad because he put a lot of pressure on her. He didn't give her a voice. He was making her do things, sports and things of that nature. And she really wishes she had more voice and space to do the things that she wanted to do. So it makes sense to me why Emily is like, I'm not going to to really connect or commit to something because I've had to I've had to do what my father said that I, I, I was supposed to do for a, uh, the majority of my life. So I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to be in a situation where someone's going to tell me what to do. I get that. I get that. Um, and she said she did work through that in therapy. So that's great to hear. Um, and at the same time too, it, I see, I still see like that internal struggle happening for her as well. Like she is complying. She, she's complying with Brennan's requests. And at the same time, she isn't agreeing with his request, too. Like, she doesn't like how it impacts her. And I, I do at times see her struggling to to really communicate from a space that's direct, right, about, about the impact of that. Like, I really don't appreciate how you talk to me. Sometimes I feel like you, you know, my feelings don't matter. I... I can we can we work on how we speak to each other? Um, I don't like how I speak to you when I get frustrated, like any of that, because there there's a lot of aggressive and passive aggressive communication happening in the hot tub as this is going on. It's a lot of that, and because there's so many feelings and hurt that hasn't been addressed, this is how the communication is coming out, not from a vulnerable space, but through the layers of protection it's a lot of daggers coming at at both of them through this whole experience and so Brennan answers the same question right about the the hardest thing that he had to forgive he talked about his parents how his parents showed up in a way that he didn't like and he confronted them about that and they uh, didn't make any changes and do what they needed to do and it's really frustrating because he said like he he he's open to new things and he wants to to do things a different way and so then we see a clip of Emily in her confessional and she's like frustrated. I don't know if it's about this or something else. Like, uh, cause again, I don't, I have a part of me that doesn't trust <laughs> maps editing, but that there's frustration. You saw the frustration in the hot tub as well. Like her face was like, because that was just a very limited information and maybe all that Brennan had in that moment. And at the same time, I understand, right? I understand both. I understand Brennan maybe not wanting to share his relationship with his parents and the conflict there, putting it on national television. I also have space for Emily's frustration because she's been getting tight-lipped conversation for over a month now from Brennan, okay? So that's that's in the room. That's present here. And so then the next question is, name one thing. Name one thing that you've given up on. Uh, that was like the hardest thing for you to give up on. And he named his relationship with his sister and how it was causing him more grief and, and struggle and stress than anything else. And he really wants to focus on his happiness. And so he made the hard decision, even though he wants a relationship with her and he's not giving up on the relationship with her. He's just not putting forth any effort to have a relationship with her at this time. You could see that this was challenging. I saw from his facial expression, he even kind of looked to the side. I don't know if he was reaching for something like a drink or, or what have you, but I saw his, his, um, he looked over. In that moment, because that was a vulnerable share, it would have been nice. I'm putting it, it would have been nice, right? I feel like Brennan was expecting for Emily to show some compassion, show that she heard him, show some empathy. However, that's not where Emily was. It's like her frustration from everything else has been building, building, building. So it was um, in that space, like that part of her that's frustrated with him didn't have any compassion for what he just shared. And it's not like Emily doesn't have compassion inside of her, but that part of her that was up <laughs> in the pool and the hot tub at that time is frustrated with Brennan and just said, okay, next question. He was like, do you need a moment? Are you you okay? And and do you and it felt like in that moment he was wanting something. He was either he needed a moment from her and it also I don't know if she answered the question or she just went to the next 
question or they didn't show the answer, but it was just kind of disjointed. That was a really disjointed moment. And then she just picked up the next one, which was like a very similar question to, or could be taken the a similar question, but he was just like, hey, do you need a moment? No. Okay. We're just going to go. And she said one question, like if you had given up on something that you wish you hadn't. And so then I have a part of me that thinks, did they, did they specifically put these questions that were pertaining to what they are dealing with? in their relationship to add fuel to the fire. There's a part of me that feels that way. I don't know that to be true, but these questions, I'm like, okay. Did you give up on something that you wish you hadn't? Are we just adding on to this? And so then Brenna asks, which I feel was a a fair question, can we pass on this one? Okay. I do feel like it's a, he can ask and he pass. I understand why also Emily is frustrated that he passed because I, I sense that She feels like he's given up on this relationship. Emily says, well, I think it's just simple. Like, have you ever given up on something or someone? And Brennan's like, yeah, I don't have anything for that. So he, he asked if he could pass. She said no. And so then he just passed by not answering the question. He's like, I'm still not going to do it. Then Emily gets frustrated by that. There's like a sigh, both of them sigh. I don't know who curses. There's there's some bleeping that happens. It's hard to know if Brennan or Emily did. And then she said, well, you know, I wish I wouldn't have given up my dream because I wanted to be Britney Spears, but that was impossible. So I wanted to be in broadcasting, be like a news anchor, just have the microphone and, and do that kind of news anchor job. But I didn't do that. Brennan then sighs and then asks the, the next question. It's like one thing that I haven't told you that would give you much more insight into who I am. So then he sighs again and he says, all right, maybe we can come back to that one. Emily stares at him and sighs again. And everybody just, everybody's sighing. And she's like, why is it so hard? And Brennan said, it's taking a lot of energy. It's taking a lot of energy for me to share this information for you. You know, you could just, you know, just shell out these answers. But for me, it's taking a lot. It's taking a lot. Emily said, yeah, it's hard for me too, but I'm doing it. It's hard. This is what we're doing. It's hard. Because Emily's not in a space to really hear Brennan. And it's also feels like Brennan is frustrated that he doesn't, he doesn't have the language to say, Emily, this is really hard for me to share these emotional things. Like I'm, I'm struggling right now. Like I shared that, that thing about my sister and that put me in a space where I'm experiencing feelings and that I didn't know that I was going to experience by sharing it with you. And plus we're in a hot tub. So like my heart's racing and it's like, I can't breathe. It's a lot. And maybe we should just take a, take a beat and then come back and then we'll continue to do the fishbowl exercise. How do you feel about that? I'm not trying, I'm not trying to not do this. I want to do this. And also this has been a lot for me and I'm, I didn't realize it was going to be this hard. He doesn't have that language to say that in the moment, it, the impact of it for Emily, is just like another thing you're not doing. Another thing you're not doing, you're not showing up for me. And Emily's in the space where she's just frustrated, frustrated with Brennan not doing. So like Brennan not doing, which is valid. Like both things are really valid. There's a lot of huffing and puffing. Um, They try to work through it, but it's, it's, it's a lost cause at this, at this moment, because then it, the impact too of it, it feels like for Brennan is she doesn't care. You know, and she doesn't care about me about to faint in the hot tub and he's trying to like draw an analogy which then she gets frustrated about he's like have you ever tried to do push-ups in the hot tub which i'm like how is that even possible but i understand what he's saying of like exerting energy me just chilling in the hot tub for two hours versus me answering really emotional evoking questions in a hot tub it's just two different experiences it could bring up a lot just answering a question about just even thinking and you could do this in your own time Think about something that brings you joy, brings you joy and notice your, your body. And then think about something that's very, I won't even say very distressing. Think about something that is mildly distressing, uh, like, uh, being in traffic or, um, like a, a, a awkward conversation that you had. Notice your body, your heart rate may even pick up. You, you might start to sweat. Your palms might get sweaty. You're like, what's happening? Because our mind and our body responds to distress in different ways and you're in a hot tub too like so these i feel like these things are valid and shouldn't be 
like pushed over and at the same time again the language um the way brennan says things it seems like he doesn't have the the tools he needs in the moment to like have a moment take a beat and and speak for what he's feeling it's it's still coming from that frustrated place for him of like oh so you don't care if i faint right so you don't care and then in his confessional he stated like i didn't know all these feelings were going to come up and then emily she just breathes through it and she doesn't um you know she responds in a way that you know i was hoping for her to be caring and supportive but she didn't do that all right so there's more harm that's done because again the where there's protection you're going to get more protection he's frustrated oh so no oh, you know so it's like ah 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 this is where they are oh it would be great in the moment for them to have some intervention but that's not happening that's not going to happen that's what married at first sight does and this is why we're here there's a lot of frustration with this season and rightfully so um because things are falling apart things are falling apart they have like one and a half couples and they're trying to like i guess fix it with michael by having like more couples but it's not it's not giving at all um and it's a it's a bit sad and frustrating for these couples um who are from my view looking to to get married to have a meaningful relationship to want something different than what they have received and so this is where we are you tell me your thoughts about how this season is going about emily and brennan what do you see uh, i understand that a lot of the behaviors that are shown um especially through this episode but even in just this show can be really activating to us to our system can bring up a lot of emotions and reactions and how we respond is really about our story and and also it's about too you know how things are not okay and at the same time there's there's always a reason and that 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 it's happening and, and it's not to say that it's right i want to be clear it's not to say that it's right or it's not harmful um i see both of them as, as really hurting in this situation i'm speaking to emily and brennan uh and even cameron and claire right i see both of them as hurting and at the same time it's like they just don't have the tools to really navigate this and really be honest and speak for what's happening in the moment because they're coming from their spaces of protection that are probably really young um, younger spaces where they had to get these resources to protect themselves in this way and so it's challenging to show up in a space that's already exciting provoking and you got cameras in your face and you're trying to work through a new relationship that's challenging that's a big ask so you let me know your thoughts and if you're still with us be sure to like the video subscribe to the channel and as always be cool be calm be centered